Well, Mary, um, I found myself at a New Age Holistic Healing Fair the other day. Hadn't been to one in a long time, uh, 25 years maybe. So, uh, Lucy and I decided to go just to see what was there. And we walked around for a little, way, a little time and got some impressions of what was going on and who was doing what. And several things happened that are worth talking about. The first impression was that these are good people and they really are looking for ways to uplift their lives. And in various ways, physically, emotionally, mentally, and as to the ways of consciousness. It was all there. But it was a bit of a struggle. I could see the struggle going on. Mainly because of, um, frankly, the mercenary spirit. That somehow it has been instilled in not just the New Age community, but it's in the yogic community as well. That somehow uh, the acquisition of wealth and money is perfectly in line with uh, spiritual goals. And that the more material wealth you have, that's an indication of spiritual elevation. This is very dangerous. There's nothing at all wrong with having money and all that. Not a thing, but wouldn't use it as an excuse for, quite frankly, screwing people. Yeah putting forth uh, a product or a service that is not quite what it's advertised to be, you know, to where you have the, um, the presentation and the promotion becomes more important than the thing itself, the service or the objects that are being sold. And the other is this need to satisfy self-esteem. And that's where the money comes in. In the ancient traditions of healing and providing words of wisdom, there's no charge. You don't charge people for that. You accept gifts, but if a person comes to you in need, in the most ancient traditions, and this is across the board, shamanism, witchcraft, um, alchemy, the alchemists, across the board, you did not charge. You did not ask anything of that person. And what gain that you have would come from either donations, what we call donations today, offerings, or it may, uh, your circumstances might be set up and upheld by a wealthy patron, such as in uh, the glory days of Zen in China. A lot of the monasteries were supported by wealthy patrons, as well as individual monks as well. I would much rather see that in the New Age movement than this constant, constant, constant talk of money. Money, 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 money. And it's everywhere. And it's a great frustration for people who really don't want to go that route. Other people give in to it and they mix up the acquisition of wealth with the spiritual elevation. And I saw that going on, all that going on there. Along with uh, what was 
spoken of just now is, is a, well, I could see very clearly a want to change the American culture to something that is more artistic, uh, more spiritually minded, uh, more compassionate, and especially as to the medical profession, um, a definite alternative. Oh, that's how it's said today. Actually, the modern medical profession is the alternative. And the ancient ways, those are the ancient ways, those are the ancient traditions. I did get a reading from one man. I'm not going to say who he was or what the reading was about, but try to put this in, the, in vague terms. Um... I do not wish to offend. This is just what I encountered. And the reason, one of the reasons that I mentioned is because I encountered the same thing last time. I had a reading from a clairvoyant, which was quite a few years ago, and I encountered much of the same, only it's intensified. I found very interesting. The reading was spoiled you might say, by a want for control. To take control of the situation, hold on to that control, and actually manipulate the thoughts and feelings of the person coming to the reading. I, I found this very interesting that, that a clairvoyant reader would even want to do that. But it was right there in front of me. There is a kind of arrogance that has spread in the uh, New Age movement, and it's affecting the yogic, uh, yogic people as well. That this has been spoken of before, where <clears throat> arrogance is how you create a reality. You want to create a certain situation in this world, and you need arrogance to do that. Uh, a yogi doesn't do that. A true yogi doesn't do that. And I see it happening quite a bit. Control and acting from the basis of arrogance to create a reality. And it's all hogwash. <laughs> it really is. The heart is a vessel, like a bowl or a chalice. And it's what you put in that in the heart that counts. If it is if you put very pure things in there, and by purity I don't mean, you know, being a, a prude. Uh, purity would be um, the recognition of the need for empathy and compassion. It could be uh, a non-dual realization that may have lasted just that long, but you remember that and you place that in the heart. And from that uh, springs our actions and our words. It colors what, we, or rather, it cleans what we see around us, so we see more clearly. The heart is also a generator of energy, and, and that energy connects with the entire environment. And by your own thoughts and your focus, what you put your attention on. That's what you draw from the environment. So that's important. But that subject, subjective experience of self that is pure and that is absolute, non-dual, that's here. That's not here. There's a lot that's going into our hearts that is imposed upon us from the outside and by forces that are, quite frankly, well, to use the word evil, yeah, unfortunate, uh, arrogant forces who really don't, they really don't know what they're doing. They really, really don't know what they're doing. Very powerful in the ways of the world, but there's no wisdom, no wisdom there at all. Very little sense of self in the negative sense, that is, they backed away from the ego. And these are the people in charge, and these are the 
what's being, we're being bombarded with, and some of these things go in the heart as well. So if you focus just on the heart, you're going to get a lot of crud just from living in this modern life. It needs to be cleansed out first. So we take that which is most pure and placed in the heart, and that lifts the, the consciousness up to the third eye. And that, that's where that non-dual mystical knowing is. So that's my impression of the New Age fair that I went to. I enjoyed it very much, uh, especially the music. Music was fantastic, you know. And uh, the clothes that people wear was very creative, very relaxed, very comfortable. Uh, certainly wasn't suit and tie, <laughs> a suit and tie occasion. It, it was all that I enjoyed very much, and I enjoyed the in the intentions of the people. They really wanted to do what was right. When I got, we got home, me and Lucy, we got home, we talked a little bit about it and gave her my impression that these were good people wanting to do what's right, but were confused, and so there's a lot of we could see a lot of turmoil, you know, behind their smiley faces. But Lucy said, that was a battle. That was a battleground. I didn't see it at first, but when I got it the next day, yeah, it was a battleground. That battleground is everywhere. If anyone wants to ask, which they're not, but I'm going to give it anyway, a little advice, is do away with the mercenary spirit. Find a way not to charge for your services. These services come to you from the Mother Goddess. She gives them to you. She offers them to you freely. And they should be passed on freely. There's a uh, sign, there was a sign at Ashram of a very famous yogi in the early 20th century saying, we do not take donations. And I'm paraphrasing here because I forget exactly what it said. But the sign went on to say, <clears throat> allow your offering to be a way to uh, cleanse yourself of sin. And by sin, he probably meant uh, bad karmas, destructive karmas. So he, he wouldn't even take a donation as a donation, but he would take it only if this person does this out of that altruism that does indeed lift you up to the higher self and does away with the uh, bad karmas. This is a good attitude and it could very well save the New Age movement. Then the first thing to do is, is, is do away with the mercenary spirit. Get it out. Throw it out. Throw it in the lake. Throw it in the river. You know, get rid of it. And the second is that arrogance and self-esteem are not the way. Those must be transcended to see reality as it is, not as we would like for it to be so we can keep a roof over our heads and so forth. There are other ways. Well, that's my general impression of the New Age Fair. I enjoyed it very much, but it also left me deeply concerned and uh, would like to see the true aspirations be fulfilled. Okay. Om Namah Shivaya. Hmm? Om Devi Maha.